apologize for the sound, however this is coming out, because this is kind of impulsive and I didn't bring my microphone with me. Having a lot more videos than I used to have, I was recently playing around with some of the analytics, some of the insights, and I was reminded that my most watched video is the, I forget what year it was, but it was uh, at the height of the Pass the Rune challenge trend thing that was going on a while ago. And if you don't know what that is, it was kind of in the vein of when people were doing Pass the Brush or Pass the Brush was one for, I think, makeup artists. And I think there was one called like Pass the Moccasin or something for indigenous people. And the premise is, well, I'll also link to it in the bottom and maybe at the end, whatever. But the premise is to create a transition between your everyday self, your like casual, like blending in self and whatever the theme of the traditional, uh, which makes sense when you're an indigenous person and uh, you do have cultural clothing that doesn't really mesh well when you need to go to like Walmart or something. Uh, and I understand the makeup artist one, but then I came across Pass the Rune, which irked me. And if you've seen that video, you know some of why, but this video is about paganism. So it's been over the weekend and I had a health issue and worked around 17 hours at a market that was taking place inside a mall, which ironically I think kind of ties into the point of... <laughs> <sighs> this is about the intersection of aesthetic and actual belief and practices. Don't get me wrong, it's great that witchcraft and occult themes, at least, are more acceptable in public. However, <laughs> it doesn't happen as much lately, but occasionally I get asked if I like the TV show Vikings. And yes, I do, but I've learned enough where I tend to tell people Yes, I do, but it really shouldn't have been on the History Channel. Mm. That is largely because it gives people this impression that we know way more about Nordic pagan cultures than we actually do. And when the Pass the Rune stuff was going around and people were somehow changing into their, their pagan look, you see kind of where I'm going with this? It was overwhelmingly influenced by things like the TV show Vikings. Now, if you've been here for more than a hot minute, you know that I love a good aesthetic. However, there's this weird phenomenon that is promoting people supposedly going toward paganism and witchcraft because of the aesthetics that they see in various media. Pagan does not equal Viking, just like Catholic does not equal lawyer. <laughs> also, someone who likes to dress up like their Lagertha or Ragnar Lothbrok or something does not equal pagan. I'm also here to make the very, very controversial statement <laughs> that if you feel more pagan and more spiritual when you dress up like a fictional character from a show that shouldn't have been on the History Channel, you probably should review what you really believe in or whether you're just doing this because you're bored. Now, like I said, I do like a good aesthetic. However, it should be assistive. You're allowed to embellish and paint whatever box that you put yourself in. That sounded more negative than I meant it, but um, you have a box, whether it has a lid or not, and you're allowed to decorate it, you're allowed to do things that make you happy and aren't hurting anyone, 
but if you cling to having this empty box because it looks like it has something inside of substance, then you have a problem. <laughs> it would be one thing if someone just really liked the aesthetic of uh, a certain culture and they were uh, using it responsibly, appreciating it. However, because this broadly overlaps with spirituality and people are so terrified of using the word religion, it matters more than people want to admit. Especially when more and more shops are branding themselves as witchy or pagan-ish, and it is a good thing that people are getting away from um, this term, because that's a whole different video that I could do, um, but gravitating from doing one bad thing to another is not fixing the problem. <laughs> The problem being that people want the pretty shiny box without what should come inside. And then the loudest people doing things like Pass the Rune Challenge, where you promote this idea that being your true self is looking like an extra on Vikings Valhalla or something. Which is also how it bleeds a little bit into this idea that paganism is this Northern European thing and not outside of northern europe it's these this barbaric weird thing versus if you have a viking aesthetic then you're doing paganism properly louder for everybody in the back i am not telling anybody that they cannot have an aesthetic facet to what they do but it is becoming increasingly more popular therefore much much easier to equate your beliefs with the ritual of aesthetic. It's easier to water it down and be less afraid of talking about beliefs, spirituality, and metaphysics, like very huge existential questions, because you don't have to think about it that hard, because it's just, it's something that you put on that makes you feel good. Garnish comes after substance. But you can still put way too much garnish on something where it actually detracts from the point of the meal. So next time you see something, ah, so next time you see something labeled pagan, and it's clearly about how something looks, not necessarily overlapping with a certain belief system, or because pagan means non-Christian, non-mainstream. There's a little bit of squish in there, but when it's obviously about how something looks, please remind yourself and others, if possible, and you can do so relatively safely you can only you make that you can only make that decision for yourself the word pagan spans a lot of different cultures and to pigeonhole it into a certain look is is to reduce it to an aesthetic it's both removing the term from a variety of different cultures who need to be acknowledged especially in a religiously supremacist world and it also promotes this idea that paganism is one narrow band of humanity, and most of the time when this is a problem, it's white humans. I have a shop where I sell some very pretty things, things that make me happy in terms of aesthetic, but there are also some functional things and things that you can turn into functional things. If someone's buying pagan, pagan and witchy like symbols uh, just for the aesthetic, I can't stop them. I also have groceries and rent. But the point of me having a shop is not necessarily just to go, ooh, shiny, you should buy this, but to create more accessibility in tools and symbols and th things you can swap out for other things that don't resonate with you, especially for if you do have an interest in witchcraft, occult, and paganism, and those are different things which I don't have time for here. So if you'd like to support my work, help me pay rent, continue to eat and get medication, horrible, awful things like that, but also trying to put into the world things that spark curiosity so it might get attention because of the aesthetic, which is also relevant here, <laughs> but it's not so focused just on the box that something comes in where you never actually look inside. I do my best to post every Saturday. I would appreciate if I could bring you along. Um, I'm going for 
some partnership goals which will further help my work and prompting people to question a little bit more what they've just been conditioned to accept. So until next Saturday, I will see you later. There's also some tattoo stuff. Don't tell it.